welcome to the presence of God. Welcome today that you've chosen to worship God here. We light this Christ candle to remember that he is here with us. And that it is his light, his love, and his goodness that we are called to reflect in everything we do. To be holy and to be godly every day, all the time. And it starts right here as we worship the one who is holy, as we worship the one that is good, as we worship our Lord, our Savior, and our King. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Lord, we come to you now extraordinarily thankful for more time to be in your presence, more time to build our relationship with you, more time to truly reflect your light and your love into this world. May we today worship you with everything as we have celebrated the joy of knowing who you are, not only in our hearts, not only in our minds, not only in our bodies, but fully for you. Lord, guide us, love us, and let us worship you with everything. It is in your glorious, powerful, and loving name. Amen. Welcome again to First Baptist Church. We're so glad to see you this morning, and the Lord is too. Would you please get up and, and greet the request of fellowship? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Reset the. Did that one come off already? I'm fine. Okay, yeah. Yeah. For the program to be on. See, you can love the second song. If you want to come up and hear the second place. Because I've got the first one. I'm good on that. I didn't even think about it when Adrian texted me today. I was like, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. sing our two praise songs today. Our first one is Shine, Jesus, Shine, which is a proclamation of us calling out the power of letting God's light in us shine for the world to see.
Our second praise song today is Change My Heart, O God. Let these truly be words of our hearts today. Said, that's fine. Amen. 
And the reason why it is mine is because she has completely already made a decision in her heart that it is her time to be a part of our family. It is her time to be a part of the family of God. It is her time to make this proclamation that she dies herself today to be raised with God forever. And that through Christ, she has life today, tomorrow, and forever. So at this time, Bobby, I ask you now to pronounce with your mouth what your heart already knows. Bobby, it is my honor and privilege to baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. As we die by ourselves, we are raised to live life with Him for all of eternity. The waters of Christ are not just for the newbies, but also for us oldies too. As this is a reminder of us to celebrate what God has given us, life eternal. May we together walk with her in her journey as we all continue to live for Christ. Amen. Good morning. Good to meet you this morning. It's my turn to do the mission uh, moments this morning. And uh, I would like to talk just a, you know, in your bulletin. You see every week the, the number of uh, missionaries uh, that we support from this church. There are many, many more the international uh, missions that we have. But uh, I would just like to touch on just two of them that we have. Uh, because they kind of represent so much of where the uh, mission is just, is just outstanding. And, and I think as Americans, we sometimes have a hard time understanding. Uh, <clears throat> the first one is from Thailand. And uh, Thailand is a very interesting country. Uh, it is very tolerant, and in a way, the missionaries that we have there have the same problems that Paul had when he got to Athens. They did not reject him. They did not reject his teaching of God. They just wanted to incorporate it. They're just another God. He already got us himself, so he's just another God, no problem. You know, that was not Paul's teaching. And that's the same kind of problem that people have, our missionaries have in Thailand. That's just one. The witness that our missionaries in Thailand have are to the most downtrodden. Uh, in most of the world, the slums are at the edge of the cities. And so our missionaries are working at the edge of the cities in the slums. And it is amazing uh, the abuse of children, especially of, of the girls, and the sex trafficking of what we were called really children and women. And women brought, are brought into Thailand with false promises, and then they become basically sexual uh, slaves because their passport's taken away, they can't go anywhere. They don't have the legal protection. And so you, can you imagine how you would view yourself after a while, of who you are, what you're worth? And so our missionaries work with these children that are so abused, and the women that are so abused, and let them know about God's love. You know, we take this so for granted. And it is such a shame. 
the flowers. They are too dear to think of themselves or hear a word from them. And then they help the children and the women to re-enter a society where they are worth that God loves them. They are worth something. And some of the women are from other countries as I mentioned. And so they help to send them back to the countries where they came from to make a home in the language that they're familiar with in the countries they come from. So that, that is just one of the areas. The, the other one is from the Dominican Republic and Haiti, I wanted to talk about a little bit because that's a lot closer to home. And the, the ones that we have here are fortunately familiar with the local language dialects. And the, the, you know, they have Spanish and French, but the dialect that most people speak is Creole. And in the Dominican Republic part, it's a Spanish version of Creole. And then in the Haitian part, it's a French version of Creole. And they are able to communicate with all of that. And you have you know, such turmoil, you know, so much irony if you watch the news. So many people fleeing from Haiti because of the, the, the government has really disintegrated because the mobs and the uh, crime, crime groups rule the place. And it is just violence, it is just terror. You have no protection. And so a lot of the people there have fled and the Dominican Republic is across the border. So you have safety there. But you have your families torn apart and you have just a feeling of utter loss. You know, what are you going to do? You have nothing, you have no home to go back to. And so they do a lot of family counseling and the students don't go to school because you have to have money to be able to go to school. And so they bring and make scholarships available to students. They can't solve the whole problem, of course. But each person that is helped is one person that can think they are worthwhile, that God loves them, that God is with them. And that makes such a difference. So I would like to close out with a, a scripture from Luke. It's just a very short part. But how are they to call on one whom they have, uh, they have not believed? And how are they to believe in, in whom they have not heard? And how are they to hear without someone to proclaim to them? And how are they to proclaim unless they are sent? We have to provide, do our part in providing the means to send them and to keep them in the mission fields to do Christ's work wherever they are. Thank you. Not only is it our job to help continue to let Christ work within this world as a whole, it is also our job to pray for one another. So as we get ready to spend time praying together today, we invite you to look inside of your bulletin at all of the prayer updates that can be found in the prayer request section of your bulletin. Please remember all of these brothers and sisters in Christ throughout your prayers this week. And remember, without doubt, that every time you pray, God is there to listen. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Lord, we come to you now First and foremost, just thankful knowing that you hear us. More than just hearing words spoken, that you truly, truly are rooted with your presence within our prayers. That we're not just saying empty words, but that we are having a conversation with you, Lord. And Lord, we know that you're present in each and every one of these journeys that we ask prayer for today. And we just ask that you let your presence be known in abundance. That everybody going through a storm, everybody on top of a mountain, everybody, no matter how low the valley is, know that they are not alone and with you. And Lord, we ask for strength today, guidance today, 
that you may help us truly be beacons of your light and love into this world. That everything we say, everything we do, and everything we give be back to your honor, your glory, and your kingdom. And Lord, help us truly, truly be your hands and feet into this world. That all may know who our Lord and Savior is. That all may have a relationship with you. That all may know your glory through our actions. It is in your glorious and powerful name that we come together now praying the prayer that you taught us to pray. Our Father, our who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, I invite the ushers to come forward and receive our tithes and offerings. Thank you. 
of your most holy rosary. All these things we ask in your Son's most precious and holy name. Amen. We invite you to stay standing for our uh, hymn uh, 297, I Love to Tell the Story. <laughs> Again, the sermon scripture is continued from Matthew, not Matthew, Romans 12. If you remember, two weeks ago, we talked about the first section, which was setting our lives up to, lead, to live holy. This next section from 9 through 21 is love in action. Hear now the words. Love must be sincere. Hate what is evil and cling on to what is good. Be devoted to one another in love. Honor one another above yourselves. Never be lacking in zeal, but keep your spirit fever, serving the Lord. Be joyful in hope, patient in affliction, faithful in prayer. Share with the Lord's people who are in need. 
practice hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice. Mourn with those who mourn. Live in harmony with one another. Do not be proud, but be willing to associate with people of lower position, and do not be conceited. Do not repay anyone evil for evil. Be careful to do what is right in the eyes of everyone. If it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. Do not take revenge, my dear friends, but leave room for God's wrath, for it is written, it is mine to avenge, and I will repay, said the Lord. On the contrary, if your enemy is hungry, feed him, and if he is thirsty, give him something to drink. In doing this, you will heap burning coals on his head. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. Here in Romans 12, as we set the scene a few weeks ago, remember that this is the Church of Rome. This is a very hostile place to be. In fact, a lot would argue that this was the second most dangerous place at this time to be. Jerusalem being the first, but Rome being the second. It was a true area in which you were living in midst of the enemy. Now, remember, pretty much every other world model, especially that of a military aspect, like what Rome was built on, was very big in making sure that you repaid the evildoers. That if somebody was rude or horrible to you, that you not only pay them back, but pay them back with harsher terms. You had to teach them a lesson. And yet, we hear from Jesus so many times, especially in Matthew in the Sermon on the Mount, that the kingdom's idea of revenge is completely different than the world's idea of revenge. And Jesus articulates that if you want true revenge, kingdom revenge, it has absolutely nothing to do with the action of revenge as much as it is trusting God to fulfill what God has promised. Here we see Paul talking to the early church and saying, listen, if you really want to get that good revenge, that revenge that makes you feel great, be nice and courteous to even those that don't deserve it. Understand and know that job, the job of judgment, the job of getting payback, the job of getting revenge rests truly on the shoulders of God and not yours. That our job as the people of God, of the hands and feet of God, is not to be so worried about that as much as making sure that we are reflecting good with such a strong passion that it will come over, overcome evil. Now today, we celebrate in one of those moments that we see good truly overcoming evil, and that is within the waters of baptism. Every time someone gets baptized, it is our way as the church, big C, not just First Baptist, but everybody that believes in the power of God, everyone that believes in the name of Christ, to proclaim that evil has lost once again to our King, that Jesus has the power, and that when we make that decision to get into the waters, we are proclaiming that power over the devil, over evil, over the world. That through Christ we have life again. And Paul articulates, especially here in Romans, that that means more than just open words. What does it truly mean to live for Christ? Well, to live for Christ means that we live a life of love. And not just that ooey gooey love but the love that calls action. I have a best friend, and I call him my best friend. Now you guys have met him a few times, Mikey. And we initially, and I know that I've told you this, but there's reason. When we first met, I could not stand him. I couldn't. He was living in, the, in college. His roommate was one of my really good friends from high school. 
And I thought that the best way to experience my sophomore year of college was to have my friend live with me. And yet, I lived in a little bit more expensive of a dorm. So my friend stayed in the not so expensive dorm. And Mikey was his roommate. And before I even got to know Mikey, I did not like him. Call it jealousy, call it anger, call it confusion, whatever you want. I did not like him. And I would go through my day thinking about how much I disliked this man for nothing that he did, but because of the situation that he was in. Now, I do have to admit to you that I might have thought these things, but I never treated him rude. I didn't treat him nice, but I didn't treat him badly either. I just made sure that he understood and knew that I didn't like him, I didn't trust him, and I didn't know him. Well, God had a little bit of a humbling moment for me because that one person who I was super jealous of would turn out to be my best friend, would help me through so many different times throughout my life, would help me especially now in the world of what being a dad is, as he's got three crazy little ones running around, and I've only got one. But that person who I initially wanted to hold all of this anger, all of this uh, jealousy, all of this revenge towards, turned out to be an amazing person to help me grow, not only as a human, but especially with my relationship with God. And it's here in Romans 12 that Paul articulates the exact same thing. If we can push ourselves aside, if we can pull ourselves out of the mindset, out of the way that we envision those around us, and truly seek to be beacons of love all the time, then God shines. We sang a song today. Shine, Jesus shine. How does Jesus shine? He uses us to get brighter. Now, please understand that statement. By no means is Pastor Cody coming here and telling you that without our help, Jesus' light isn't bright. That's not what I'm saying. Jesus' light is bright enough. Each and every one of us is a testament to that. At some point in time in our lives, the light of Christ was so blind for us that we realized the benefits of it, and we started walking with Him. But when we all together start walking in that light, start walking in that good, start walking in that holiness, the brightness of Christ is so bright to everyone else around them that they cannot hide from it. They can't ignore it. I uh, celebrated my birthday, which is a few months ago, with my father-in-law and that side of our family. And ever since I married Shelby, I knew that they were going to corner me into starting to become a, a hunter. So for my birthday this year, I got a full backpack full of hunting gear. And one of them is this rechargeable flashlight. And I'll let you know a little secret. Any boy that gets a flashlight, the very first thing they have to do is turn it on. You guys see how bright it is. So I turned that puppy on in, the, in my living room and it lit up my entire house. It was very bright. So bright that Shelby gave me some side eye. <laughs> I was doing something that made me happy and because I turned on that light, everybody around me saw. Now granted, at that time, it was just Shelby and Aurora, but the same goes for us all the time. When we are truly dipped, and I love to say dipped in this case, when we are dipped in the goodness of God, in the holiness of God, in the righteousness of God, we should be like that little boy or that 34-year-old boy that got a brand new flashlight. We should be turning it on and showing everybody and we do that through our action. Now Paul articulates love in a way that Christ articulated love. In Matthew we see Christ articulate so much that love is more than just an action, an emo oh, no, sorry, not an action, it's more than just an emotion, it is an action, that it has to go with it. 
the love of Christ comes trust. We understand and know from the very beginning the trust that sets within us. But as we continue to grow that relationship, as we continue to build on that relationship, we start seeing multiple, multiple different ways in which God builds that trust of love within us. I shared on Wednesday that every once in a while, in a good way, I sometimes question my relationship with God. Because think about it, in this context, the creator of the universe, the top dog, the creator of everything, created you, created every bit of you, created you so well that he knows exactly how many hairs are on your head. And that creator of the universe loves you so much that he sent his son to die for you, knowing that you yourself could not have life with him forever, but through his son, you could have life with him forever. And what do you have to do? Nothing. That equation does not add up. There's times where I look at Shogun and I go, I'm so extraordinarily grateful to be a part of that question that the devil sneaks in and goes, no, Cody, that's not how it works. But it really and truly is. God loves you so much that he has, through action, shown you what kingdom love is, what God's love is. And that if we truly open ourselves up to it, we reap the benefits. Now, Jesus articulates a little bit farther, just as Paul is here in Romans 12, that once we have accepted that journey, there is a way of life in which we should live. But let's be honest, we don't always do it. I'm just as guilty as everybody else. There's a lot of times where my words or my actions overpower the words and actions of God. There's times where I think I'm doing the right thing when in reality I'm not doing the right thing. There's times where anger and revenge truly seeps and sinks in more and more within my life. But one little secret part of this is that Paul helps us understand how in those moments we can truly set aside our pain and our suffering or our malintented minds, our malintented hearts. And that is with God. Verse 21. Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. What is good in this world? God. God is good. God is the source of good. God is the thing that truly helps us understand and define what the word good is, even though it's one of those magical words that's extraordinarily hard for us to define but we know it when we see it. And we know what it looks like because of who represented it to us first. We know what good is because it seeks the will of God. It looks like the will of God. It is the will of God. And Paul articulates that our actions, when not driven by the will of God, can become evil, hurtful, Sad, angry. But how do you beat that? You beat that evil with what has always been evil. And that is the will of God. We celebrated today a sister's decision to let the good of God truly defeat the evil around her to participate and join in with the showing that the good defeated the evil, to constantly live a life of good with God so that the evil godlessness can be pushed aside. And Paul helps us know that that action has to be sincere. It has to hate what is not godly. 
It has to be devoted to one another. It has to honor one another. It has to be truly passionate. He lists out all of these personality, these character traits to help us truly reflect God in the greatest way we possibly can. Now, over the next few weeks, as we get closer and closer to not only celebrating what we are thankful for, but as we get closer and closer to preparing ourselves for the light of the world to come through Christ's birth, we're going to look at all the different ways in which we reflect everything else but God. Next week, we're going to talk about a touchy subject, and that is church hurt. Where we, Shelby, myself, Aurora, and my mother in law, Missy, went to a concert on Friday night by, uh, there's three guys there, Jeremy, Austin, and Colton. And Austin and Colton, during their moment of giving their testimony, both talked about the exact same thing. They talked about church hurt. And what happens when the people of light, when the people of love, stop being bright and stop being loved? And they both wrote songs. One of them's not out yet, or else I'd make you listen to it. About making sure that we do not fall victim to paying attention to the evil that is in those other than the good that is in God. Guys, we live in a chaotic time, a statement that each and every one of us understands and most likely believes. You turn on the news, and a lot of times, depression comes more than joy and happiness. There's a lot of times where everywhere we look, we see the negative and the evil more than the good. But we have to remember that in the way that the equation is truly built, evil cannot defeat good. Each and every one of us is called to live a life of love, an active love. A love that is godly by nature. A love that listens to the will of God. A love that we do not create, but is in us because God is in us. A love that sets us apart and makes sure that we are truly aiding Jesus in brightening the darkness around. There's a part of scripture where Jesus is talking about light in general, and he says, light makes it so that evil does not dwell. Light makes it so that we see what is wrong. Darkness cannot dwell in the presence of light, which means the peace of light that is in each and every one of us as we make the decision to be the disciple of God is bright enough to defeat any evil that is within us. But we have to make sure that we are listening, listening to the goodness and the holiness of God and not just being compliant and okay with the evilness around us. Do not be overcome by evil. Paul lets us know that each and every one of us has a battle every single day on whether or not we're going to do the godly and good or if we're going to be compliant and do bad and evil. If we're going to shine for God or if we're going to put a blanket or a bowl or whatever you want around us and hide it for ourselves. And we have to make sure we have to make sure that we always remember that the goodness of God will always be evil. Now that's a very strong thing I want you to hear you. The goodness of God will always beat evil. It already has. And it already will. It will continue to do what it does. So as we're going through our storms, as we are going through 
our own wants and our own needs as we are, quite frankly, forgetting what it means to be Christian at times, we have to remember that the thing that God has placed within us, the Holy Spirit, has never, will never lose to evil. Good will always be evil. That's the beauty of good. God is great all the time. And all the time, God is great. So if there is a moment in which you feel like you are not shining for God the way that you are supposed to, if there is a moment where the darkness and the evil and the negativeness all around you seems to be consuming you, remember that with the goodness of God, it can never beat you. For God's will, God's love is stronger and has always been stronger. And that if we truly seek to love the way that God loved us, that the light of God will be too strong and too powerful for the whole world not to see. So my challenge for you this week is to genuinely reflect and ask within your heart, are you reflecting God the way that God has called you to? Are you being so bright that everyone else around you has to dim their eyes? Are you holding on to the goodness of God that rests within you? And are you remembering that that goodness will always beat evil? Are you being a reflector of God's light into this world? Or are you being a dim, full person? Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Lord, we come to you now just extremely thankful. Thankful that you have already defeated evil. Thankful that through the actions of your love, we have been saved. Not just once, but every single moment. And Lord, we come to you now just asking for strength, that we may truly be lights of your love and your kingdom, that we may be the hands and feet that you call us to be, that through our actions of love all may see your holiness, your greatness, and your good. And Lord, help us not be overcome with evil, but help us hold you true into the roots of our heart. That everything we say, everything we do may truly be to your honor and your glory. And Lord, help us not just be individually good, but help us be a good church. A church that is rooted in your foundation, in your will. A church in which the words church hurt become faint. A place in which your good overcomes everything that happens to us. A place in which we can be a beacon of your light and your love in the community. Not only here in Highland, but in this world. And Lord, help us remember that we can do all of these things. Not because of our own power and strength, but because of your power and your strength. Lord, help us be rooted in you, that everything we do be to your honor and your glory, spreading your light and your love all around. It is in your glorious, powerful, and loving name. Amen. We invite you that if your heart has not made that decision, if your heart has not made that decision to be in the goodness of God from this day forward, that you come forward as we sing our final hymn today, 518, The Longer I Serve Him. Please stand as we sing. <laughs>
announcements before your words of benediction. <coughs> First and foremost, we invite Bobby to join uh, in the back at the end of service that you all may uh, congratulate her and greet her with love. Second announcement is that uh, the sign-up sheet for the craft fair, uh, they'll be leaving at 8.30 uh, to get there at 9. If you have any questions, please see Bobby for that. Third announcement is that tonight at 6 o'clock to 8 o'clock will be our Fall Fest hosted by the youth and CE and Discovery Club. We would love for you guys to come out. If you would like to be in this year's pumpkin carving contest and you are above 18, it is bring your own pumpkin, but we would love to have you. Uh, right now, knock on wood, we have no football games, so all the youth will be there tonight. Woo! Uh, and, but it will be a great night. There will be chili, there will be hot dogs, s'mores, bring a lawn chair, bring a pumpkin if you want to enter the contest, and come and enjoy our pavilion and uh, the fellowship within this family. Another announcement, as we're getting closer to the month of October, please look inside of your bulletin for November's uh, donation items for the food pantry. They're found in your announcement section. And then, uh, still, do what? Toothbrush and cereals. Single packaged toothbrushes uh, is what they put on our thing. So single packaged toothbrushes and cereal boxes or cereal bags, they're not gonna turn you away. Uh, and I'm personally a bag over a box kind of guy. So, uh, and then final announcement is that we have another baptism next week. So come ready to celebrate as Kylan enters into the waters of Christ. Hear now the words of benediction. Go into this world and remember that you are good because of the will of God that rests within your heart. Go and act in godly love so that this world may see just how bright God is. Amen and amen.